Simon & Schuster Audio presents Cell by Stephen King Read by Campbell Scott Civilization slipped into its second dark age on an unsurprising track of blood, but with a speed that could not have been foreseen by even the most pessimistic futurist. It was as if it had been waiting to go. On October 1st, God was in his heaven, the stock market stood at 10,140, and most of the planes were on time, except for those landing and taking off in Chicago, and that was to be expected. Two weeks later, the skies belonged to the birds again, and the stock market was a memory. By Halloween, every major city from New York to Moscow stank to the empty heavens, and the world as it had been was a memory. The Pulse. Chapter 1. The event that came to be known as The Pulse began at 3.03 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the afternoon of October 1st. The term was a misnomer, of course, but within ten hours of the event, most of the scientists capable of pointing this out were either dead or insane. The name hardly mattered in any case. What mattered was the effect. At three o'clock on that day, a young man of no particular importance to history came walking, almost bouncing, east along Boylston Street in Boston. His name was Clayton Riddell. There was an expression of undoubted contentment on his face to go along with the spring in his step. From his left hand there swung the handles of an artist's portfolio, the kind that closes and latches to make a traveling case. Twined around the fingers of his right hand was the drawstring of a brown plastic shopping bag with the words, Small Treasures, printed on it for anyone who cared to read them. Inside the bag, swinging back and forth, was a small round object. A present, you might have guessed, and you would have been right. You might further have guessed that this Clayton Riddell was a young man seeking to commemorate some small, or perhaps even not so small, victory with a small treasure, and you would have been right again. The item inside the bag was a rather expensive glass paperweight, with a gray haze of dandelion fluff caught in its center. He had bought it on his walk back from the Copley Square Hotel to the much humbler Atlantic Avenue Inn, where he was staying. Frightened by the $90 price tag on the paperweight's base, somehow even more frightened by the realization that he could now afford such a thing. Handing his credit card over to the clerk had taken almost physical courage. He doubted if he could have done it if the paperweight had been for himself. He would... Sample complete. Ready to continue?